I'm going to tear into the front end on a Suzuki Quad Runner 250. This is a four-wheel drive model. Uh, you've got the tie rod here, shocks, upper A-arm, lower A-arm. You got the CV shaft. This is the outer joint here, the inner joint here. Brake drum, brake panel. You've got a dust cover here, and then your axle runs all the way out to here. So I'm going to walk through this process, uh, pulling all this apart. I wanted to show you how to disassemble it, kind of some common wear problems, some com common issues that we see on these four-wheelers. First things you want to do, obviously, pull this tire off, this wheel and tire. Uh, takes four 14-millimeter lug nuts. Zip those off of there, pull that wheel off. Uh, we've already done that at this time. Next, we've got your cap here. A lot of times you can get in there. You can take and actually pull on it with your hand, or you can take anything and get in behind there and just kind of pry it off of there. Fairly pliable rubber, uh, so you can move it around, uh, bend it back and forth. You want to take it off. Actually, there's a washer right here, and that's what holds it on. Underneath there, you've got a cotter pin that runs all the way through. This axle here, you straighten this out as best as possible. I like to use a pair of side dykes. Some people will use pliers. Some people will end up just cutting it off uh, with a pair of side dykes. Uh, sometimes you can salvage and reuse these. So if you're going back together, your cotter pin's in good condition there, you can reuse them. Um, but then I just take and I grab the, this end here of the side dykes and pull that pin out of there. So you can see that, just use it to kind of pry on itself. That one there is pretty beat up. We probably won't be reusing that one. We've got an inch and three sixteenths nut here to remove this, and I've got a half inch drive to remove it. Remove that off of there. You've got your larger inch and three sixteenths nut. You've got a smaller washer there, and then this is uh, the washer that holds that cap on there. So that that cap sits inside uh, that groove there of that washer. So. We'll set that aside. Next, we've got our brake drum, or this is actually uh, the hub as well underneath of here. So to pull the drum out, you can just take and wiggle it out just like that. Now, if you have pressure on your front master cylinder up, your right hand lever on the handlebars there, then you're not gonna be able to turn this, you're not gonna be able to move it, you're not gonna be able to pry it off. Some people, what they do is take a hammer and a chisel, pound in behind here, or they take a screwdriver, get in there and pry on it. I wanna warn you, be very, very careful. This plate here is easy to bend. You don't want to damage this expensive seal right here. So if you can, just take take your fingers, wiggle back and forth. If your brakes are adjusted correctly, you should be able to just wiggle that right off. The other thing that you can do is take a plastic or rubber mallet there, tap on the axle. Now, that's not actually going to help you pull this brake drum off of there, but sometimes what that'll do is allow you to pull the actual hub off with the brake drum housing. So in this case, we're able just to wiggle that drum off of there. So we'll just take, wiggle that whole thing, pull that off of there. And then now you've got your brake drum here. Inspect there, make sure that that's in good condition. If you've got lots of grooves and major wear in there, uh, you wanna replace this drum. It gives you a uh, dimension here of what this is supposed to measure, 165.7 millimeters. So you wanna uh, measure that and uh, make sure that that's adequate uh, for putting back together there. Now this is your wheel hub here. This is your front wheel hub. You can just take and pull that off, kind of the same thing there. This one, a lot of times you gotta take and tap on the axle, and then you gotta get in behind here, and basically you just do that so you know that this hub isn't stuck on your axle. And then you can just take and pull that out, kind of the same thing, wiggle it back and forth. Once you get this out a little ways, uh, this is a steel plate. Sometimes they kind of get seized onto that bearing that's inside this panel here. You could actually take something, a uh, small crowbar or something, get in here and pry. You want to be really careful. You don't put too much pressure on these cylinders, and I definitely wouldn't press on these brake shoes right here. You're going to cause some major issues going back together if you do bend that up. But if you need to get in here, there's the, the wheel hub actually is behind here, or excuse me, the bearing carrier is behind here. A lot of times you can get in there and put a little pressure on it and push that out. Sometimes they come off without any issues, but you basically have to have that everything centered uh, just right for that to happen. Just continue to, to wiggle that off of there just like that. Now, sometimes, like I said, sometimes those bearings will actually get seized on this actual hub itself there, making it a little bit more challenging to pull out of there. Unfortunately, because of the way this is set up, 
to get this brake panel off of here, um, you have to remove this hub to get to the bolts that are in behind here. So you're kind of working against yourself there if you try to remove the entire plate here, the bolts are behind here, you're not gonna pull that off. What you could do, if this was seized on there, what you could do is actually remove your upper A-arm bolt here and your lower A-arm bolt here, your tie rod up here, and this entire assembly can come out with your axle. That's not ideal because you eventually have to take it all apart anyways, especially if that bearing is seized on there, but that at least gets you to be able to put it on the workbench, be able to work with it a little bit easier and try to push these parts apart. So we got ours off at this point. We'll set that aside here. There is splines in this hub. You wanna make sure that those are in good conditions. Obviously they are because we had a tough time getting it apart. Now, what you're gonna do is take a 14 millimeter uh, socket here. You're gonna pull this upper knuckle bolt off of here. Um, this is holds the A-arm onto the actual knuckle itself. So remove that. You can see there we already started to remove that. We've got the same thing down below here coming in from the front. You've got a 14 millimeter bolt holding that lower A-arm. So this is the left hand lower. This is the left hand upper. This is the left hand arm. You've got the left hand tie rod and you've got the left hand steering knuckle. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is pull off this brake panel. Now, sometimes uh, this is as far as you need to go if you're replacing brake shoes. What you do here, I'll get you a close up. All right, okay, now to remove the actual brake shoes, what you do, there's clips right here and right here. So what I do is take a small pair of pliers and I'll take and I'll actually push in and then I'll clamp down. So push in, clamp down, turn. There's a little arm in there. You turn a quarter turn, you can take and pull that clip off of there like that. Do the same thing on the bottom there. Same thing, pull that down, pull that clip off of there. Now you can take your brake shoes off. Now, you've got springs here and springs here. What you also have is a little release arm here. Now what that does is basically doesn't allow your uh, brake pads to go in too far, putting pressure on that cylinder, and that just kind of works as a stopper there. You can actually just take and pry that forward, and that'll allow you take a little bit of pressure off of those brake shoes. And I'll show you that mechanism when we get this pulled off here. So this is your brake piston caliper here, and then here is your brake shoes. Now when you go and order brake shoes, you're not gonna get this arm. All you're gonna get is these shoes here. It'll be the same. You pull this arm off of here, you pull these springs off of here. Typically, you'll reuse both of those, the arm here and the springs there. A lot of times your brake shoes won't come with new springs, so keep that in mind. Then going back together, same thing, put it on the bottom, slide it on the top, then take these, put your finger in behind there, keep these arms straight the, with those shoes on there, take, push it on there, push it on with a finger there, take these pliers, take and do a quarter turn, and uh, those will be locked into place there. Now, continuing on with our uh, brake panel removal, we've got four bolts, we've already removed two just to kind of speed things up, but two 12 millimeter bolts we have left to go here. We've got two and two. To remove this panel then, Take and remove that. And that, again, we would typically have four of those. And before we go too terrible far, I'm gonna pull this camera out a little bit and show you what we have uh, on the top side here. All right, before we get that brake panel completely off, what I'm gonna do, take a 10 millimeter here. Behind, we've got your brake line, and it's a steel line that runs uh, to this brake piston cylinder here. We'll take, loosen that up, because what we're gonna do is actually end up taking this entire panel off here. Once we get that 10 millimeter loosened up, I'm gonna grab a rag, because we already have drained the master cylinder up at the handlebars, but I'm going to, there's still gonna be some fluid left in these lines, so I'm gonna put a rag underneath there, and I'm gonna let that drip down onto that uh, rag there. Now we're ready to completely pull that brake panel off of there. And that's the way that it looks here. You've got your brake line in the back here. This is directional, so this is the left-hand side. Your brake hose here, and this is removable. Here's your brake bleeder screw. And I've showed you a separate video on how to bleed the brakes on this system. Check that out on my channel. We're gonna set this aside now. And I'm gonna continue to move on. We're gonna actually take CV shaft, uh, remove shock and A-arms there, and I'm gonna show you that process. We've already removed upper and lower bolts here for our A-arms. Now what we have is our uh, tie rod bolt here. 
14 millimeter again, coming in from the back side. Remove that, and then our tie rod will just be able to pull up and out of there. Slide that off. I like to put my bolts back in here so I keep track of which ones go where. And we've got our arm that can be pulled off, separated from our knuckle itself. We're gonna keep it all together, um, but it's two 14 millimeter bolts up top here. We've got a brake hose that'll come in from the bottom here. There's a mount that is a 10 millimeter uh, that'll hold our brake hose in place. We can just slide that brake hose out of there to get it out of the way, but we still have our mount attached to the actual arm there. So now to get the knuckles pulled off of the A-arms, because they are, because the shock is still attached to the four-wheeler, we can just take and tap down on our knuckle here and slide that top one out of that knuckle. All right, we've got that top one slid out. We're gonna move that out and around that A-arm there. And then a lot of times you can just take and pick up on that uh, bottom one and just tap that lower A-arm down there. Now we've got that knuckle slid off of there. That uh, lower A arm is disconnected, upper A arm is disconnected. Now we're going to take and remove our upper A arm from our shock here. 14 millimeter, and then you've got a bolt running through there that will spin. So we'll remove, hold that bolt there while we remove that nut. Do the same on the top. We'll take, tap that bolt out of there. A lot of times these bushings down in the bottom side of that shock will hold you up. There's also gonna be a little bit of pressure there. So we'll take and tap that down. You can see there, because of the bushings on the A-arm, there, uh, there's, there's a lot of pressure there. So we'll be able to slide that shock up, slide that out of the way. Now to get our drive shaft out of there. All right, I'll grab that axle then, couple pulls, and that axle will slide right out of that differential there. Now you've got splines on the inside, you've got a a uh, snap ring that'll actually expand and that's what holds uh, that axle inside of that differential there. And then now you can take and either rebuild these axle shafts. Check my videos out on uh, rebuilding axle shafts on this King Quad. Uh, they're real similar to uh, other four wheelers. So make sure you uh, look those videos up. I've showed you how to do several different styles of CV uh, drive shaft boot banding tools. And then I also sell those. Check the links below for that. So to get the A-arms off then, uh, remove these uh, four 14 millimeter bolts and nuts there. And then because of these bushings, the rubber bushings that are in place there, a lot of times you gotta take a crowbar and pry these uh, A-arms out of this housing here. A lot of times that's why guys are taking this apart is to replace those uh, bushings there. There's a rubber bushing that sort of gets hard and welded to the actual frame. Sometimes these actual bolts uh, so you got to take a hammer, push these out, and then obviously replace those bolts when you do that. So that's the front end on a Suzuki Quad Runner 250 four-wheel drive. I've done a lot of other videos on this four-wheeler. If you guys have questions or comments, make sure and leave those below. If this video has been helpful, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And I uh, appreciate you guys watching.